Namaste. I got an interesting comment last night on Facebook. Somebody wrote regarding the video on old age, saying that I don't understand how you can say such horrible things about kids and old people. They are my favorites. Children and seniors are my favorites. And she thought that I had got it all wrong and blah, 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 and so on and so forth. Well, where to start? Because if one person has this viewpoint, then it's a sure thing that others do too. So I want to address this misunderstanding. First of all, we're not talking about people, young people and old people. Huh? We're talking about youth and old age as states of being in the material world. You know, there's a saying, great minds discuss ideas. Mediocre minds discuss events. Small minds discuss people. <laughs> so we're not talking about people. We're talking about ideas here. The state of youth and the state of old age are both marked by ignorance. When a child first comes into this world, they don't understand anything. They're completely in the dark. Yeah, they're beautiful and loving and so many other things. But they really don't get it, you know? They don't understand the purpose of life, the meaning of life, the ways of life, what's going to happen next. <laughs> Nothing. And then they get hit from all sides with conditioning mental programming, social conditioning from parents, friends, school, business, everywhere, you name it, the media, everything. Everything conspires to give them a certain worldview. And what is that worldview? You are your body. And the state of your body, whether it's beautiful or ugly, whether you're intelligent or stupid, whether you're well-educated or ignorant, whether you're rich or poor, is how we're going to measure your value as a being. And that's how you should also measure others. And so there's this whole, whole stupid, completely ignorant, ridiculously insane set of materialistic values that everyone is programmed with. It's poured in from every side until you're completely surrounded by it. And most people go through life, their whole life, accepting these values as normal, as the right way to be, the right way to think, the right way to look at things, the right way to treat people. And it's completely bogus. And then when they reach old age, unless they have done the special work to overcome that conditioning, the same conditioning is still there and they judge themselves and others by it. And consequently, they don't reach self-realization. They miss the opportunity of human life for liberation and real happiness. And what do they get instead? The misery of old age, disease, and death viewed as a material concept, a material idea. So in view of the tremendous uh, downside, the penalties and the, the dangers of missing the real message of human life, missing the real purpose 
and not getting the greatest benefit that's possible in this life, which is enlightenment. Huh? To get hung up on some sentimental idea about, oh, we love kids and oh, old people are so sweet. And uh, yes, they are. Okay. But youth, childhood as a state of being and old age as a material state of being are terrible. Because in childhood, we don't have the intelligence to pursue self-realization. In an old age, we don't have the strength. It takes tremendous mental and physical strength and endurance to actually reach enlightenment. And for that reason, sadhana is best done in youth, as early as possible. There's a saying in India, a saint in truth is a saint in youth. In other words, the tendency or the intention toward self-realization is visible very early in the life of a true saint. Whereas in others, it's something they pick up along the way later on. And they're, most, they're just mostly imitation. What it really means is that this person has done a lot of sadhana and got a lot of insights and breakthroughs in their previous life. And they're bringing that with them into this life. And because of that, very early on, like when I was three years old, I was sitting in the church watching my parents decorate for Easter. And I was too young to help, so I was just sitting there looking around. <laughs> and I noticed this picture of Jesus in the garden. Huh? It's on the stained glass windows in every church practically I've ever seen, where Jesus is like leaning on a rock. Huh? He's praying and the light is coming down into his face and he's looking up and I realized he's talking with God. And my very next thought was, I'm going to do that. Because I had heard in the church that Jesus said, whatever I'm doing, you will do also, and you will do even more than me. So, okay, if you can talk to God, then I can talk to God, right? <laughs> three years old, well, three and a half. But that means there was already a tendency installed by karma. And if you look at my chart, you can see it's very clear, astrologically. So the chart, the birth configuration of a person who is a real saint is very clear that they are protected by divine grace. They are influenced, they are moved towards the uh, self-realization, the concepts, the lifestyle, the values of spiritual life by their intrinsic nature, by their very birth. So I used to do astrology professionally. And at one point I was charging like 200, 250 bucks for a reading. It's US dollars. And I gave it up. And you know why I gave it up? Because it was too hard for me to see in chart after chart after chart that this person has very, very little chance of reaching self-realization. I mean, they came to me to do their chart, not to get instruction in meditation, not to get a blessing toward enlightenment, not to become a disciple, but to get their chart read. That right there tells you something. It tells you a lot. They weren't even looking for self-realization. And that's the problem. People in their prime of life, in their 20s, 30s, and 40s, huh, 
are so busy chasing after money and relationships that they completely ignore self-realization. And then by the time old age and death start knocking on the door in the 50s and 60s, it's too late. You don't have the strength of youth to bring you through the rigors of sadhana and self-realization. So it's hard to do enough meditation and intense enough meditation to actually break through the mind, to get realization. Ramana Maharshi compares it to a pearl diver. Huh? Pearls are the most valuable things and yet they grow on the floor of the ocean. To reach them, you have to dive down very far, and it takes strength. It takes a tremendous effort. If you've ever done free diving, you know that to dive down 30 or 40 feet, even with fins, takes a tremendous effort. So this is what happens. People get conditioned in their ignorant youth and they fail to begin the process of self-realization until it's basically too late, if they begin it at all. Old age catches up with them, and then they have to face old age, disease, and death in a condition of material consciousness, which is very, very painful, full of regrets. Huh? See, young people, children, are so innocent. They're nice to be with, but their innocence is out of ignorance. Old people are sweet unless they become bitter, you know, with regret. But the ones who don't are, are sweet because they realize, oh my God, this life is all, almost over. I better be nice to people. Or what's going to happen to me? What's going to be my destination? Well, it's already too late. And that's a shame. So to sum it all up, the real value of human life is enlightenment. The greatest opportunity in human life is self-realization. And if you don't do it while you have the chance during the season, huh? which is like early youth, 18, 19, 20, you know. I actually started, as soon as I left home, I started meditating every day. I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> but I was trying. I was making the effort. I had formed the intention. And that's the, the key thing here. And then after uh, several years of searching, I met my guru when I was like, 24 and it took me three years to surrender and finally at, at age 27 I, I went to him and I said okay I'm ready now I'm ready to be a disciple and so he took me to India and so on but that's another story the point is while you're still young while you're strong and resilient while your mind is still flexible to form the intention and begin the process of self-realization. Otherwise, it can be tragic. You can find yourself uh, in old age without any karmic bank account that could lead to a higher state of being in the next life. So this is why people are stuck in samsara. This is why they're going around and around the wheel of birth and death. This is why they keep coming back again and again without any hope of release. So that's why we're giving these lessons. That's why we're uh, revealing these scriptures and hope that everybody gets the real message, which is to begin the process of self-realization without delay. Om Tat Sat. Aum Harihi Aum
கருணார்ணவமாய் கருதக்கதி நல்கும் அருணாச்சல சிவம் கீதா